guys, we are back to videoing today, um, starting chapter 5, I think on yours it may be chapter 6, um, estimating with finite sums. Example 1, suppose from the second hour to fourth hour of your road trip, you travel with the cruise control set to exactly 70 miles per hour for that two hour stretch. How far have you traveled during this time? Well, you went 70 miles per hour times two hours. That would cancel the hours and give you 140 miles. Um, example 2 says sketch a graph modeling the situation in the above example. Geometrically, how can we indicate the total distance traveled? Well, if we put our time on our x-axis and we say from time 2 to time 4 and then we put our velocity on our y-axis and we say he went a constant speed of 70 miles per hour. So what we've got is we've got hours, my emails are getting on my nerves, and then miles per hour on the y-axis. So you essentially have this little rectangle right here where you've got two here, 70 here, you multiply your 70 miles per hour times your two hours, your hours cancels, and you get 140 miles. Okay, and that's geometrically how can we indicate the total distance. So what have we actually done here? When we're finding, when we're taking our velocity and going backwards to our position, we're actually just finding the area. Um, it says, what if the velocity was not constant? Say, for instance, the velocity in miles per hour is given by the function b of t equals 10t minus t squared, where t is in hours, and we wanted to know the total distance traveled during the first 10 hours. Sketch this graph below. Geometrically speaking, do you think we can find the total distance traveled in the same way as before? Why or why not? Okay. Well, um, if we factor out a t, we would have 10 minus t. So we would have two zeros. We would have 0 and 10. So 0, 10. It's a parabola um, with vertex halfway between. So it would be 5 if we fill that back in. That would be 50 minus 25 is 25. So our vertex is 525. So let's call that 25. It would be about right there. And it would be a parabola. It's kind of crooked. Um, what it's asking is, is the total distance traveled still the area between the curve and the x-axis? So is this the total distance traveled? And I'd actually, yes it is. Because we could find the area under this. The thing is, it's not a rectangle. We don't know how to find the area of this. So if we could divide it into a whole bunch of little rectangles, we could actually estimate the area under the curve and we can actually estimate the total distance traveled. Um, underneath what you just had, that big huge paragraph, if you want to read that, that's fine. Um, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense right now so I skipped it and we're here. It says the area problem and the rectangular approximation method called RAM, aka Riemann sums. Um, so suppose we wanted to know that region bounded by a curve, the x-axis and the lines x equals a and x equals b shown at the right. The first step is to divide the interval from a to b into sub-intervals. The examples below show 4 and 8 sub-intervals respectively, if you just look down on your page. After dividing the given interval into sub-intervals, we can then draw rectangles using the width of each sub-interval as the base. The height of each rectangle is determined by the function value at a point in the specific subinterval and can be determined using three different methods. We could use the left endpoint of each subinterval, often called LRAM or left Riemann sum, the right endpoint of each subinterval, called the RRAM or right Riemann sum, and the mid or the midpoint called the M Riemann sum. Now, I, this is a lot of reading that we just did and you're like, "What?" Um, basically all we're doing is we're dividing this 
We're going to divide it into rectangles and approximate the area under the curve. Because what would happen is you increase your number of rectangles, you closer approximate the area under the curve. It says which method is shown in each of the two graphs below. Um, well, this one, if you look at where the endpoints are for the rectangles, um, here, would you say that it's using the left point on the curve or the right point of the rectangle? Well, it's on the left. It's an LRAM, and it has four subintervals. That means there's four rectangles. Um, and then you have this one. This one is also looks like looks like it's also a left. It's an LRAM using eight subintervals, you know, or eight, eight rectangles. Um, and if you look at them, which one would you say is a better approximation of the area under the curve? Well, over here you've got a little bit of extra um, area, but then it would fill in with this part, but then you've got all this that's not filled in. So this wouldn't be a good approximation, not very good. Would this one be better? It's still not great um, because you got a little extra area here and here would model there, but then you still got extra area. And what this is, this is actually called an under approximation. Okay. Um, it says the total area under the curve then is approximately equal to the total area of all the rectangles. Which of the graphs above gives a better approximation of the area under the curve? Well, um, it's this going to be the second one. Why? Because there's more rectangles. Okay. Summary of the process. It says the sketch is almost mandatory. You're going to have to draw a picture. Then step one, divide the part divide your interval into n subintervals. Create n rectangles whose base equals the width of each subinterval and whose height is determined by the function value at the left end point, the right end point, or the midpoint. Find the area and add them together. Um, it says illustrate the use of RAM and MRAM on the graphs below. Use four rectangles. Okay, what you would do is you would divide it into fourths. So go halfway, then go halfway again. This one we're going to do an RAM. That means you would pull it up, go to the right, and draw a rectangle. Pull it up from the right, draw a rectangle. Go to the right, draw a rectangle. And then go to the right, draw a rectangle. Okay. Um, and that would be, let's see, let's shade it in. And that would be an RAM. And I know right now you're thinking, what the heck? But this is actually a very easy concept once we get actually into what we're actually doing. Right now I'm just explaining what, what it is we're doing. Um, again, four subintervals. Now this one, that's not very even. Let me try that again. This one we're going to do the midpoint. So I go halfway between and I draw a rectangle. Halfway between, draw a rectangle. Halfway, rectangle. And halfway rectangle. You're not going to be perfect, but um, it is what it is. And then the area is going to be the width times the height, where the height is equal to your function. Okay, so let's actually do some. Let's actually do a problem. It says use four rectangles to approximate the area under the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x plus 2 from 1 to 3. Okay, I'm going to go from 1 to 3 and I want to use four rectangles. Okay, so four rectangles. I'm going to go halfway, then I'm going to go halfway again. Okay, this is an LRAM, so I'm going to go to there, I'm going to go up left end point, I go up my left first and then I bring it down, left end point, and there's my four rectangles, I have to sneeze, <coughs> okay, and I'm going to do my little x, y, 
my first x is 1, then I have 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. Because that's 1, 2, 3, and those are 1.5 and 2.5. And Okay, so I need to figure out my y values. Well, how do I find my y values? I plug them in everywhere there's an x to find y. Um, I have already done that for you. This one is 1, 1 1.25, 2, and 3.25, and then 5. Okay, but the question is, which points do I need? All I'm going to do is find the area of the rectangles and add them together. Okay, I have four rectangles, so I'm going to have length times width, plus length times width, plus length times width, plus length times width. Okay, let's start out with the width across the bottom. What is the width of each of these rectangles? Well, I had two big blocks divided into smaller blocks. What's the difference between one and a half? Well, it's a half. The difference between a half and two is a half, a half again, and a half again. So the difference is a half. So my width is going to be a half each time. Okay? And my height is going to be the height of my rectangle. How tall is it? Well, it's the, di the distance at one. So it's one. And then the next one, the height of the next rectangle is the distance at 1.5, so that's 1.25. The next one is the distance at 2, which is 2. And then the next one is the distance at 2.5, which is 3.25. And I just stick that in my calculator and I get 3.75. And that's approximating the area under the curve using an LRAM. The next one I'm going to do is going to be the RAM, okay? The RAM, I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going from 1 to 3, but I'm going to start from the right. And go all the way up, and I need to divide this into 4. Go over and come all the way down. On this one, I go all the way up to there. Go over, come all the way down, and change colors. Go all the way up. Oops, I did not change colors. Um, you go all the way up to there, come over, come all the way down. Go up that side, over, all the way down. So I have four rectangles where our right Riemann sum means your endpoints lie on the right side. Okay? So again, I need my XY chart that I just should have copied and pasted that thing. Uh, let's do it. Let's just copy and paste it. It'll be easier. Let me go grab it. That's nice. That's good. Go away. Really? It's going to give me the whole thing? Let's just take a picture. Okay. Now I can just paste it in over and over again when I need it. Ooh, that's big. Okay, here we go. Um, my R RAM, again, I have four rectangles, length times width, length times width, length times width, length times width. So that's how you find the area of a rectangle. My width, again, is my distance from here to here. So it's a half each time. So a half, a half, a half, and a half. My height, my height of my rectangle is going to come from the right value. So I'm going to start from the right. So it's going to be the 3. I'm going to start with the 3. The height is 5. And then the next one is going to be 2.5. So 3.25. The next one's going to be 2. 2. And then the next one's going to be 1.5. So 1.25. Okay. And if we look, and you end up getting 5.75. So if you can tell, the right ram is an over-approximation. Like it's too big. Every single one of them are way too big. Whereas the L ram, uh, what just happened? I'm not sure. Hold on. Was 
Wow, I messed it up. Just forget it. If you look back at your LRAM, it's an under approximation. Um, and if we go back over here, when we're doing our left RAM, essentially you use the values from the left and you leave out the one on the end. When you're doing the right RAM, you use the four on the right and you leave out the one on the left. Now the midpoint is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to have to find other values. I'm going to make this a lot bigger. Okay, because I want to go from 1 to 3. 1 to 3. And then I got 1.5. And 2.5. Why was that difficult for me? Um, we want to use our midpoints. Our midpoints are here, 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 and here. So we have to make a whole new XY chart. We need the value at 1.25, which is halfway between 1 and 1.5, 1.75, which is halfway again, 2.25, and 2.75. How do I find these values? I plug them into my X's up here, and I get, I'll just tell you what you get, 1.063, 1.4, 1.5, 1.75, 1.75. Five, six, three, and 4.063 because we're going to draw our rectangles like this. You're going to take it, ah, come up, I almost dropped something, come up from the midpoint all the way up, put a point on my graph, and then drop the rectangle down just like that. Midpoint all the way up to here. Drop your rectangle. Start at the midpoint, go all the way up, draw your rectangle. Midpoint, all the way up. Am I at the middle? I don't know. Can't tell. Ooh, it's way up there. Your picture doesn't have to be exact as long as your numbers are. Ooh, that was a horrible rectangle. Let's try again. Okay, I have four rectangles, so it's length times width, length times width, length times width, length times width. And my length, or my width rather, is still a half each time, because I still have the same number of rectangles. Um, so it's a half each time, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then I'm multiplying by these values here. I don't have to think, I just put them in. 1.063, 1.563, 2.563, and 4.063. We add those all together and you should get 4.625. Uh, you may actually get 4.626 because when I did it on my paper I had it rounded to four decimal places. So because I rounded them all up, it may be... This is more accurate, though, because it was actually 2.5 on all these. But I didn't have room to write that. Write that. Okay, and that was a midpoint Riemann sum. Example 9. I feel like my paper is too big. Okay. It says it is not necessary to have a graph to estimate the area. Suppose the table below shows the velocity of a model train engine moving along a track for 10 seconds. Okay. Using a left Riemann sum with 10 subintervals, estimate the distance traveled by the engine in the first 10 seconds. And sometimes it's actually easier to, ooh, sorry, um, it's easier if they're written like this, time and velocity. Um, time goes from 0 to 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, and then 0, 12, 22, 10, 5, 13, 11, 6, 2, 6, 0. Because I don't like how it's uh, in two columns. That stresses me out and makes me angry. And I also don't like that this is not even, but that makes me less angry. 
Um, close enough. Okay, using a left front row ensemble with 10 subintervals. So if I have 10 subintervals, that means I have 10 rectangles. So I need to do length times width 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, that's good. Yay. If it's a left Riemann sum, you start from the left and go to the right. Okay? My distance each time, the distance between 0 and 1 is 1, between 1 and 2 is 1, between 2 and 3 is 1, between 3 and 4 is 1, all the way out. So all of my widths are going to be 1. 1, 1, 1. One, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. If it's a left Riemann sum, I start from the left. Start from the left, and I go all the way over, and I knock out the right. Okay. So if I go all the way over to the right, um, these values here are going to be what goes in my little blanks. 0, 12, 22, 10, 5, 13, 11, 6, 2, and 6. I just stick that in my calculator and I get 88 inches. Um, why is it inches? Because I was multiplying inches per second times seconds. So the seconds cancel and I get inches. Okay, so I'm essentially going backwards from velocity to distance. So I'm anti-differentiating. Okay, um, using a midpoint Riemann sum with five subintervals, estimate the distance traveled by the engine in the first ten seconds. And I'm going to probably need this value, so I'm going to unerase it up here. Zero. Okay. Um, a midpoint Riemann sum with five subintervals. That means I have five. One. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I have five rectangles. Link times width, link times width, link times width. So if I have five and I'm going from zero to ten, that means I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? You're not here to respond to me. So we're going to assume it makes sense. If not, grab me and I'll come show you. Um, because I'm going to have five rectangles and I'm going to use the midpoints. The midpoint is the number dead between. This one, 12, 10, 13, 6, and 6. So my distance each time, my width of my rectangle is going to be from 0 to 2. So that's 2. From 2 to 4, 2 again. From 4 to 6. 2, 6 to 8, 2, 8 to 10, 2. And my heights are going to be the 12, 10, 13, 6, and 6. And then I just add that all up for the sake of time. I've already done that, and I get 94 inches. We're almost done. The last thing is the trapezoid rule. Um, it says while rectangles make a fairly good approximation, it's easy to see that we're going to need a lot of them to provide a good estimate. We can find a better estimate in less time if we use trapezoids. Um, so we're just basically going to do the area of a trapezoid. They're going to be area oriented upright, where this is base 1, this is base 2, and this is the height. If you recall from geometry, the formula for the area of a trapezoid is 1 half height times b1 plus b2. Uh, oops, so... Let's actually do one. Same problem we had before, except for it says you use four trapezoids to approximate the area under the curve. So I'm going to still need my um, table. I wonder if I still have it pasted. Let's check and see. Right click. Paste. Ha ha! It's still there. Yay. All right, so there's my table. Okay. And I'm going to use four trapezoids. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go from one to three. To draw a trapezoid, you just go up, let's see, 
Oops. Oh, I cannot draw a straight line to save my life. Straight up, and you just connect them. Straight up. Connect them. Connect them. So would you say that the trapezoid is a much better approximation? It's much, much better. And tomorrow in class I'll show you a calculator program that, um, if I can find, I feel like I have it. Uh, let me check just real fast. It won't take but a second just to see if I have it. Um, math inspired. Wow. Well, hold on. It's thinking. I'm not sure what it's thinking about. I want this one. And I want, let's see, subject, math, topic, calculus, category, Riemann sums. There it is. That's what I want. I want this one. Okay. I want you to watch what happens. Now, it says, right now I've only got one rectangle. And it's set on a left Riemann sum. Watch what happens as I increase the rectangle. Say I have five. It's getting, I mean, it's better than one. Okay, one is a very poor approximation of the area under that curve. Two is a little better, but watch what happens as I increase it. The more rectangles that I have, 98 rectangles is a pretty dang good approximation, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? And I would say that these are, would you, this be an, a left Riemann sum on this one? Would it be an under approximation or an over approximation? Well, because it's under, each of the rectangles is coming underneath, it's an under approximation. Okay. What about midpoint rectangles? See what happens as I get more and more? Okay. Uh, right rectangles. Right rectangles is an over approximation. It's always going to be just a little bit more, but still getting a pretty good approximation there. And then trapezoids is going to be the best because even with four rectangles, that's an excellent. Now, if you have one rectangle, it's going to be over. Two, three. It pretty much nails it. What else is on here? Oh, yeah, we did that. Okay, that was all. <laughs> um, but so the trapezoids is a very good approximation. So a trapezoid is one half base, wait, just kidding, one half height times B1 plus B2. And I have four of them. So what I do is I say one half height times B1 plus B2 plus one half height times B1 plus B2 plus one half height times B1 plus B2 plus one half height times, oh, I ran out of room, B1 plus B2. Okay. The height is this each time. It's just your distance. So your height is going to be a half um, in each one. My B1 plus B2 is going to be my values at each one. So B1, B2, B1, B2, B1, B2, B1, B2. So 1 and 1, you just go straight across your table. 1 and 1.25, 1.25 and 2, 2 and 3.25, and 3.25 and 5. Then you just add them all up and you should get 4.75. Um, and if you notice, if you look back, our LRAM was 3.75. Our RRAM was 5.75. Where is 4.75? Dead in the middle of those. It's the average of the LRAM and the RRAM. And I think that's all of 5.1. Yep, it is. Okay, that's it.